the conference the last two days uh, were about Clean Sky 2 uh, and the achievements of Clean Sky 2 as well as on Clean Sky 3 and the prospective future of the new program. Uh, in terms of Clean Sky 2, uh, we are well on track in order to deliver a successful program. 50% uh, of the program uh, has been achieved. Uh, we are approaching the two-third uh, mark uh, towards the end of this year and about 5,000 engineers are currently working on Clean Sky 2. So, a tremendous work is being performed and the first results uh, show some impressive uh, deliverables uh, on the horizon. But we are not at the end, um, we are starting to think about uh, what next uh, and there the challenge which has been set by the Paris Agreement um, limiting uh, climate impact by two degrees uh, or even possible by one and a half degrees uh, which was subsequently uh, followed by an EU target um, of minus 80% greenhouse gas emissions uh, is going to be the guiding north for us in the new Clean Skies 3 context. Um, we have started to define the first program elements uh, which are going to focus obviously on decarbonization, uh, which are going to be very focused, uh, which are going to have the impact in mind uh, in order to uh, improve the CO2 footprint uh, of aeronautics and aviation uh, significantly. And to reach this minus 80% target, which is, which is a tremendous target. Um, the next six months will be used uh, in order to define the content in more detail um, and as well as work with the Commission in order to understand what kind of processes, procedures can be applied and need to be applied uh, in order to make that happen. Uh, and I think the, the, the topic at the end will be to synchronize the ambition with the budget which is available. Well, what is really exciting about Clean Sky, Clean Sky 2, and we hope we can continue this and even expand it in Clean Sky 3, is that it brings such an ecosystem, such a community together. 28 nations are represented, we have over 800 unique entities. But what we're starting to see in the new generation and the disruptors that might actually come in into the marketplace and I hope even dominate the world air, aircraft fleet somewhere in the 30s, 40s, towards 2050, because we need them in this effort towards the Paris Agreement, is a very tight integration between engines, engine integration and aircraft. And we might even see things like what is called distributed propulsion, so many different propulsors on an aircraft. And that means that this level of cooperation and collaboration between the engine manufacturers, the systems and the, and the airframe manufacturers is going to only increase. The integration issues are going to become the dominant challenges. And so this collaboration and the network in which it takes place is actually the only way we can address these issues. Uh, and of course, a conglomerate, if I can call it that, like GE, Avio being a member of the GE family with a footprint established well over Europe, talking to universities, talking to research organizations, working with clusters and SMEs, that's purely additive. So that really brings a lot to the party, not just from Avio's traditional home country, if you like, of Italy, but across nations like Czech Republic, Poland, Germany, and elsewhere. Well, frankly, the three areas that come to mind, the Maestro engine program for small and business uh, aircraft, the racer program, fast rotorcraft with gearboxes, and the unducted single fan, an application which might reach regional aircraft and single aisle aircraft. All three are incredibly exciting in terms of what they can bring to the industry, which is moving towards large scale integration and demonstration and de-risking future engines, future aircraft for the next generation of flight, basically. And uh, if I can take the example of Racer, uh, I think Avio is well-known, world-renowned in terms of the gearbox technology, gearbox capabilities and aero engines. Uh, you know, looking at a fast rotor craft like Racer, we're talking about not one gearbox, but even three because of the lateral rotors and the vertical rotor. Uh, this aircraft, this rotor craft, is going to be heading towards its first flight within 24 months from now. So obviously, all of us are very excited about that. But outside that, the other two hit right at the center of what we want to do in terms of environmental goals. Io credo che sia molto importante sollecitare la partecipazione delle piccole e medie imprese campane nei programmi di Clean Sky 2 e quindi ancora di più nei futuri Clean Sky 3 perché questo è un modo per qualificare la nostra offerta, è un modo per aprire eh, il nostro ecosistema di piccole e medie imprese anche di gran qualità a una dimensione europea sapendo che questo mondo, il mondo dell'aviation è un mondo globale, un mercato globale e quindi non esiste il contesto campano ma è 
esiste il contesto europeo che diventa un player importante poi verso altre realtà a livello globale come la Cina o come l'America, quindi partecipare a Clean Sky è partecipare al gioco sul mercato globale. Noi abbiamo realizzato questo memorandum of understanding che è stato molto utile, molto funzionale, ha innanzitutto promosso delle opportunità sul nostro territorio anche con la presenza dei rappresentanti di Clean Sky e poi abbiamo mh, avuto un supporto importante nella ridefinizione delle nostre traiettorie tecnologiche, nella nostra Ristre che ovviamente vede l'aerospazio come uno degli ambiti strategici più importanti e poi abbiamo voluto dare anche un contributo specifico in termini di risorse avendo un bando destinato alle nostre piccole e medie imprese che lavoravano su diciamo, priorità strategiche definite anche da Clean Sky è chiaro che per noi avere sul territorio eh, imprese mh, di eccellenza come Avio Aero è molto importante perché poi di base sono le grandi aziende che fanno un po' da leadership che trainano nella loro eh, catena del valore anche il sistema di piccole e medie imprese e devo dire anche sempre di più di start-up. Uh, Avio Aereo è un player importante nel, nel sito di Pomigliano, insomma, sono presenti tante eccellenze e noi diciamo, ne siamo ben consapevoli anche con l'approvazione del nostro contratto di sviluppo, insomma, che ha visto anche la partecipazione di altre regioni e degli altri siti funzionali di Avio Aereo sul territorio nazionale, perché ancora una volta la partita dell'industrializzazione e della ricerca va fatta su scala uh, globale.